Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Longest Subarray of Ones after deleting one element. This question is part of Leak Code 75. If you are following along and I have that entire playlist linked down below as well as all the other playlists that we've been doing. So what is this question? Well, given a binary array nums, you should delete one element from it. Return the size of the longest non-empty subarray containing only ones in the resulting array. Return zero if there is no such subarray. So example one, we have the following input and our longest subarray of only ones after deleting one element is going to be three. We just get rid of the zero right over here. And example two, this is our input. We can delete this element right over here to get that longest size of five. And example three, they're already all ones, but we have to delete an element either way, whether or not it's a one or a zero. So we get an output of two. Okay, so we're given an input array with only zeros or ones, it's a binary array, and we have to return the longest possible subarray of only ones, but we have to delete one element, which means if we have ones and zeros, we can have a single zero in our subarray and just go ahead and delete it. So say I have the following example right over here. What I wanna do is start in the very beginning, iterate through and extend my subarray. So if my starting point is here, I can have one zero right now because I'm just going to assume that I'm deleting this. I'm going to go as far as I can up until I hit my second zero. Once I do that, I know I can't have more than one zero in my subarray, right? I can only delete one element. I'm going to start after that last zero I've seen. So my new starting point for my subarray is going to be here. Now that I've seen the zero, I can continue pushing out up until I come across another zero. Once I do, my new starting point has to reset after that last zero I've seen. So my new starting point would be here and I would continue pushing out up until I hit the end of the array. And that's all we really need to do. This is a sliding window problem. We're allowed one zero, so we're gonna see how far we can go up until we run into our second zero, at which point we're going to include that latter zero in our subarray, which means we discard that old one we had seen. We start after that one. So we're gonna go ahead and code this up and then run through a full example. In order to code this up, I want to keep track of a few things. The first is the maximum length of a subarray I've seen so far, the index of the last occurrence of my zero, and the starting point of my current subarray. In the beginning, my maximum length is going to be zero. I haven't really seen a subarray of any length whatsoever at the moment. My starting point is going to also be index zero. And the index of the last occurrence of my zero I've seen, well, we haven't seen any zeros. So I'm just going to say that's negative one. It's not at index zero. It's at nothing so far. Now, as we iterate through our input num, so for i in range length of nums, if the index i am on is a zero, so if nums of i equals zero, I wanna move my starting point to be after my last occurrence of the zero. So start is going to equal zero plus one. And I wanna update what zero is. The last occurrence of my zero is no longer what it was. It is now index i. Now, all I need to do is update maximum length. Max length is going to be the max of what I have so far. So what's in max length and what's in index I minus start. And all I have to do in the end is return my max length. So let's go ahead and submit this first. And it is accepted. Now we're gonna do a quick walkthrough using example one itself, just to see how this is going to play out line by line. So we're passing in this array nums to our function. The first thing we do is initialize maximum length, start and zero. So max length is going to start off with zero. Start is also zero at this index right here. And zero starts off at negative one. It's not at any particular index right now. So it's just floating before zero. Now for i in range length of nums, so we're iterating through our input nums, i starts off at index zero. Now if nums of i equals zero, which it does, so we go in this if condition, start is going to equal zero plus one. So start is going to equal zero plus one. We're starting after the last occurrence of the zero. It didn't really occur yet. So our starting position is going to be at zero because negative one plus one is zero. So start stays where it is. And we also update zero to be this index we're on. So zero is now going to be index zero. Now, what is the max length here? Well, it's going to be what we have so far, which is zero and i minus start. So i minus start is zero minus zero, which is also zero. So we don't really have a bigger length just yet. We go back in our for loop, move index i down. So we're now at index one. Nums of i is not equal to zero. So we don't make any updates over here. And all we do is calculate our maximum length. So i minus start, i is at index one, start is at zero. So one minus zero is one. So our total length right now is one. So we update max length to hold the max between zero and one, which will be one. 
And this makes sense, right? We had a total length of two. So in order to get that total length, what we would have to do is I minus start plus one because it's not inclusive otherwise. But since we wanna delete an element anyway, we don't include that plus one, we're just doing I minus start directly. So now going back in this for loop again, and I'm also writing out the indices here just so it's clearer. We have I at index two. This doesn't equal zero, so no updates to start or zero. We just calculate max length again. Well, what's two minus zero? That's two. Two is greater than our current max length, so we go ahead and update that. Move I down. Again, this is not equal to zero at this index, so we just update our max length again. It now has a length of three. Going in our for loop again, at this point, nums of i does equal zero, so we want to update start and zero. What do we update start to? Start is going to be zero plus one. So what was the last occurrence of the zero we saw? That was at index zero, and start is moving after that. So start moves to index one. It is now over here, and zero moves to the last occurrence of zero we've seen, which is our own index. So it's going to be index four. Now that these updates have been made, we can go ahead and update our maximum length. So I minus start four minus one is three. It's not greater than our max length. So we don't need to go ahead and change it really. It's going to stay three. But if you notice, right, we only have one zero in our subarray and that's fine because that can be the element we get to delete. So right now our maximum subarray of all ones correctly shows three. So now we go back in our for loop. I is now index five. This is not zero. So we don't go in this if we just update max length. So five minus one is four. We can go ahead and update this move down again. All we do is update max length. It goes to five. And now we're at another zero. So again, we're just repeating the same thing, right? Start is going to be zero plus one. We want to start after the last zero we've seen. So we don't include two zeros. We want the longest subarrays of only ones. So moving this one after the last occurrence of the zero we've seen, start now goes to index five and zero now goes to index seven. Updating max length again, seven minus five is two. This is the subarray we're working with right now. It's not greater than the one we've seen, so we don't make any updates. And just go back in our loop for the last iteration. So at index eight, again, we're not at zero. All we do is update max length. Eight minus five is three. It's not greater than the max length we've seen so far. So this subarray is not our final subarray. It's actually going to be this one right over here, and it has a max length of five. And if you see, this is exactly what we were expecting in example two. So what is the time and space complexity for this solution? For time, we're iterating through our entire input nums just once. So this is a linear scan, one pass, O of n, if there are n elements in our array. And for space, we are only keeping track of three variables. It has nothing to do with how big our input gets. We'll only ever need to store these variables. So this is going to be constant O of one for space. And we just went ahead and solved the longest subarray of ones after deleting one element. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.